tell me something. If the first <coughs> derivative has to do with slope, and the slope has to do with increasing and decreasing, what does the second derivative have to deal with? Good, because the second derivative is how the slope is changing. Whether the slope is increasing or whether the slope is decreasing, that's going to give you the shape of your curve, concave up or concave down. Let's just recall how, how that works. Uh, so a little refresher. If your second derivative is, that means positive. If your second derivative is positive, what's that mean? Concave, which way? Up. Oh, that means your slope's increasing, right? Slope increasing does this. Or, well, or does this if you're going downwards. But it's going to be concave up. Well, that means that if your second derivative is negative, your slope is decreasing. That's going to be a concave down shape. If your second derivative equals zero, <clears throat> not necessarily an asymptote. If your second derivative equals zero, it's a possibility that you're changing concavity there. If your second derivative is positive, you're definitely concave up, right? If your second derivative is negative, you're definitely concave down. What do you call that when you, well, if you switch from concave up to concave down, which we can do, right? Concave up to concave down, that's a switch. At somewhere in there, the second derivative must equal zero, right? That's a, that could be a switch in concavity. Does it have to be? Not necessarily, you need to check for it. But it's a possible concavity change. And what do you call that? Right. This is a possible inflection point. <coughs> So let's find out right now how to find some inflection points. That's our whole goal for the rest of our day, and then tie these things together. <coughs> so how to find inflection points? We're going to be using the second derivative test. The second derivative test is going to very much mirror the first derivative test. What do you think the first thing you're going to do in the second derivative test is? We'll find the first derivative, yeah. And then, geniuses, all of you, very good. Yeah, you're going to find the second derivative. So second derivative test says, of course, find the second derivative. Why are we looking for the second derivative? That kind of tells you, right? That tells you. It says, if you, if you set the second derivative equal to zero and solve for it, you're going to get all the places where you could possibly change concavity. You follow me? Where that equals zero. Then you're going to test some intervals, just like you did before. Where you're positive means you're concave up. Where you're negative means you're concave down. That gives you the way that you're changing your curve, whether you are down or up. So we do a very similar thing. You take the second derivative, you're going to set it equal to zero. <coughs> for your possible inflection points, set equal to zero for your pips. It's fun to say too. Pip. Classic. And then you're going to make your second derivative table.
Here's what the second derivative table looks like. And you're going to see why it looks this way when, it, when I put them together finally. You're going to have a number line that represents your graph, just like you did before with your, with your first derivative test. Just like this. Now, I left this on the board for a reason so you can compare this. The first derivative test goes on the top of your graph, right? The second derivative test, we're going to put right below it on the same number line. That's going to give you two things at once. It's going to give you increasing and how it's increasing. It's going to give you decreasing and how it's decreasing. It's going to give you relative max and min and your inflection points. It gives you everything right there. So second derivative test looks like this. The possible inflection points go on the bottom of your number line, on the bottom of your graph, basically. You put all of your possible inflection points, and then just like we did for our first derivative test, we're going to check a number in each interval, here and here and here. We're going to do that. Where are we going to do that? In the original function, in the first derivative, or the second derivative? This is the second derivative test, right? We better use the second derivative because that's what's going to tell us the concavity. So we're going to find the sine of each interval by using f double prime of x. I'll write that out for you. Find the sine. I don't care what the value, but the sine is important. Find the sine of each interval by using f double prime of x, the second group. Would you like a couple examples on this? Are there any questions before we, we do that? Does it make sense why this is going to work? First derivative gives you relative maximum. Second derivative gives you concavity. So inflection points will tell you the distinction between the concavities. That's how we're going to use it. So let's do the second derivative test. Let's find the, the points of inflection, if there are any, for this next function. inflection points. What does it entail finding inflection points? What are we going to have to do for inflection points? Second derivative. So let's all take the second derivative right now. Go for it. Take the second derivative. Once you've taken the second derivative, set it equal to zero. Solve for it. Hopefully you all got that for your first derivative. Did I do that right? Do you have the same thing? Okay. <coughs> then we take a second derivative. What would this give you, by the way? What's the first derivative give you? Slope increasing decreasing. Slope. It would give you a uh, possible relative max or min, which is increasing decreasing. That's what that would give you. I'm not talking about that right now. We will in the future. But for this, I'm just talking about inflection points. So second derivative is where we need to be. <laughs> You get 12x squared minus 24x as well? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with that? What now? Plot 12x. Set it to zero. Set it, okay, set it equal to zero first. <coughs> yeah. Then we're going to factor, do whatever we need to do to solve this. <laughs> By solving this, we're finding the places where the second derivative equals zero. That means it doesn't have a concavity. That's going to give you every possible inflection point.
Yes, no? How many possible inflection points do we get? Not just one, right? Not just that one. You also have that zero. So x equals zero, x equals two. <clears throat> now we get to make the second derivative table. Looks very similar to the first derivative test. We only have the second derivative here. And we're going to put both of our possible inflection points on that graph. It's got to be in order. It's in the order of a number line because the graph is in the order of a number line. So the 0 has to come first and the 2 next. And these are our pips. Remember, that's a possible inflection point. How many intervals do we need to check? Three. Let's check all three. We're going to check them in which one? The original function, the first derivative, or the second derivative? Because that's concavity. And we're talking about concavity here. So why don't you check that? I would probably check negative 1, I check 1, and I check 3. So give that a try. Remember, I don't quite care about the, the, the actual number. I care whether it's positive or negative. That's what's key. f double prime of negative 1, 1, and 3. We're going to plug those into our second derivative. We're going to see whether it's positive or negative. So negative 1. Looks like we're going to get positive? Cool. How about 1? How about 3? What's that tell you? In this interval, are we concave up or concave down? Don't say concave up, all right? <laughs> concave up. Yeah. This is not concave up. Concave. So we are concave up. True? Shape this way. Up. Down. Up. And we're talking about concavity. So concave. Up. Down. Up. I don't mean increasing, decreasing, right? We talked about that earlier. Increasing means the function is going up. Concave up means the way it would be going up, or the way it's going down. That's the shape of the graph, not necessarily whether you're going higher or lower, how it's shaped. That's the difference. Now, question, is that an actual inflection point? Does the concavity change, basically? Yes. From here to here, does it change? Then that's an inflection point. What if that had been plus and that had been plus? Would that be an inflection point? No. That happens occasionally. It does. Uh, off, not often. I mean, often it's like this, especially polynomials. You get this a lot. But if it goes concave up to concave down, that's certainly not a possible anymore. That is an inflection point. Is this an inflection point? Mm -hmm. If I look at you long enough, you're going to change your answer. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can pull under pressure. <laughs> Concave down to concave up. Did it change? Yes. Then that's certainly an inflection point. By the way, is that my inflection point? No. That's the x value for my inflection point. Let's find the inflection points themselves. So I want 0, comma something and 2, comma something, because that's my x coordinates of my inflection points. I have 0 and I have 2. How do you find points?